Hey everybody, come on in. We live on YouTube and we live on Instagram. Those of y'all on YouTube, make sure you also follow me on Instagram at Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. And those of you on Instagram, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channels. Um, it's two of them, Tanya Knows No Limit, and the other one is Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews. And also, as usual, I'm going to put in the chat the link to our Facebook group. So you guys feel free to go over there and click request to join and I will add you to our Facebook group. Um, those of you on Instagram who can't see the link on YouTube, um, it's called Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews. So you can look that up on Facebook, click request to join and I'll add you to the group. But today we will be discussing the most current episode of Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of Atlanta. And it's season 11, episode 4. Everybody in the chat, please come on in, have a seat, get you a nice drink, whatever that may be. Some juice, some tea, some wine, some yak. <laughs> some water, whatever you prefer. <laughs> but we're going to jump right into this uh, review of this latest episode. And the title of the episode was, oh Lord, it was season 11, episode 4, Pass the Peach, Throw the Shade. And you know these ladies can be shady. We all know that. All of them. <laughs> all of them. But anywho, um, the episode has started off with Candy and Todd paying a visit to Dr. Jackie. And we all know Dr. Jackie from the Married to Medicine show. And they were seeing her about, you know, trying to get pregnant again. Um, <laughs> Candy feels, you know, she felt that She's unable to get pregnant or, you know, having complications on, you know, getting pregnant because of some fibroid surgeries that she had had in the past. So the next step for her, or I guess, you know, the only other option for her um, is trying to surrogate. So she went to Dr. Jackie, you know, to get more information on, you know, doing a surrogacy pregnancy. So... Jack, Jackie is telling her, basically, <laughs> y'all have two embryos left. Y'all have two embryos chilling on ice, you know, just sitting there. So what y'all want to do? Todd, he wasn't really feeling it, though, when Dr. Jackie told him, you know, even though y'all have two of them left, you can only use one. You can only inseminate one into the surrogate mother. And he was like, but we don't want to leave any behind. <laughs> He don't want to leave any behind. And they have said that on the last episode too. And I swear every time they mention that, I'm like, uh, every time they say we don't want to leave any behind, I'm like thinking about the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind. But um, seriously though, he's like, well, you know, if we can only have one embryo per <laughs> surrogate then maybe we need two surrogate mothers and everybody else is like two you mean like <laughs> like twins i don't know <laughs> i don't know what he's thinking like come on y'all um dr jackie was like you want two babies like seriously you want two babies and then even candy was sitting there like um um i don't know about all that i don't know about all that but for real y'all remember the episode when riley was talking stuff um she basically called them unfit parents <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really. But she probably didn't use those exact words. But what she said was what she said. And y'all remember what she said, <laughs> which was basically, you know what? I don't know why y'all thinking about trying to have more kids. Y'all shouldn't be trying to have more kids. You know, when I was younger, I used to think, you know, you didn't even have a job, mom. But, you know, as I got older, it seemed like y'all don't ever got no time for us or time for the baby, you know, 
we saw in that one episode when Candy was receiving an award, um, Todd was nowhere to be found, somewhere sipping at the bar. Candy was trying to, you know, take a, take photos and stuff for the award show. And her assistant was hanging on to the baby who's screaming at the top of his head. And he's like, I didn't sign up for this. So, you know, Riley was basically saying that episode, y'all, no more babies. Y'all too busy. Candy got two, three, five, eleven jobs touring with, you know, Escape. Todd, he got his whatever he does. <laughs> I don't know if that's just running, you know, the old lady game. I don't know what Todd does. But anywho, um, so basically, she's like, no, mom, you don't need any more kids. And now Todd talking about two, like hiring two surrogate mothers. <laughs> I don't think that's a good decision right there. But anywho, um, when Candy, uh, now, okay. I've heard in the past from, you know, different people on the TV show that they say candy is really frugal. You know, I wouldn't say cheap at everything, but they said, you know, she's really frugal. But to think that a surrogate mother, well, okay, she said a friend had told her because Dr. Jackie said, you know, surrogate mother, that can be around like 90K, $100,000. And she actually thought that she could get a surrogate as low as $35,000. And Dr. Jackie was like, yeah, maybe if you hire somebody like Shanene from the hood. <laughs> or maybe if you travel to one of those third world countries. And I'm like, $35,000? That's more than a lot of people make it. That's, um, I mean, that's good money. Not, not, not saying that's not good money. But, I mean, to carry a baby for nine months and to go through the pains and the sleepless nights and, I mean, the contractions and, I, I don't know. I think $35,000 is, $35, is a little low. That's a little low. So, if that's what she was expecting, she going to end up with somebody named Shanae. <laughs> but, anywho, um... Dr. Jackie had told her, you know what? I have someone in mind, though. You know, someone I can refer you to, someone who has popped out babies before, you know, for other people. She was saying it like it was a career. Like, yeah, you know, she done done it two, three, four times, you know, just babies back to back for other people like it's a full time job. <laughs> but I'm sure she was charging more than 35K. But anywho, um, back to Riley. I'm just saying. If Riley, if what she is saying is accurate, like accurate, and it didn't seem like Riley was bluffing us. It didn't seem like she was dragging it out or anything, but I think they should do one embryo if she really wants a baby and Ty really wants a baby. Just one embryo because y'all too busy and y'all don't seem like y'all about to slow down anytime soon. I know y'all don't want to leave no children behind, but um... <laughs> you might have to you might have to i don't know i don't know but then you know they moved on to eva who met up with her fiance for cigars and drinks and i was like is she really smoking a cigar um i don't know i would have never pictured her as a cigar smoker but anyway, you know, from the sounds of her fiance, he really hasn't been able to have any say so in the wedding plans, the big wedding plans, which he did seem to be OK with. He was just like, you know what? I'm just happy to be a part of you and your mom's wedding. <laughs> but that's just typical. I mean, most women and their family and friends end up being the ones, you know, to take over the wedding plans and the man just shows up. He shows up for the suit fitting. He shows up for the wedding party photos. And he shows up for the wedding. And last but not least, he shows up for the bill. At least, you know, most of it. Normally. Normally. <laughs> normally, unless you're more in a broke man and he... Mm, but anywho, that's a whole nother subject. But then she tells her fiancé that she's been getting advice from NeNe, um... And has decided to let Nene help her with the wedding. Like, you know, find a dress and such. And do y'all think that Nene makes a good wedding advisor? Or, you know, marriage advisor? I think so. 
I think possibly she could. I, I do. Um, her and Greg has been through a lot. Not only with this, you know, cancer scare that he's, you know, had to deal with, you know, lately this past year, but they've been married. They've been divorced. Then they got married again. So, you know, they obviously doing something right, you know. Obviously, they they seem happy, uh, you know, and even though they're going through, like I said, the cancer and everything, you know, they still seem happy. Nene's been strong for her man, and she's been really supportive and everything, and, you know, trying to help him get through that. So I think that Nene could, you know, give her, you know, some some wise words, <laughs> some wise words. But um, then we have Portia and her man, Dennis. The hot dog king. <laughs> you know, he owns the hot dog factory along with some other hookah joints and, you know, some other stuff. You know, he big time a baller and all that. But anywho, um, they met up to meet with his mom, who Portia has never yet met. But did y'all catch that when the camera zoomed in on his tattoos on his hand? I caught it. It was his right hand, his right hand. And it was some words tattooed on like the top of his hand and on the side of his head. Um, I was like really, really trying to pay close attention. I was rewinding it and everything because, you know, last episode, we was informed that he has some tattoos of the names of some of his exes on his body. And he also got a tattoo of Portia on his body. Now, where on his body? I don't know. <laughs> and Inquiring Minds is not trying to find out. I do not know where they are. <laughs> and I don't want to know. But um, I was sure looking and kept rewinding the footage trying to see if... if do that say April? Do that say Teresa? I'm... <laughs> <laughs> y'all know y'all was looking too. <laughs> y'all know y'all was looking too. But anyway, um, when his mom got there, Portia surprised her, you know, with a Louis Vuitton pocketbook. Um, did y'all see the expression on his mom's face? She was like, uh, Harpo? Who this woman? Who done just gifted me with this very expensive piece of merchandise? Like, do y'all think that she was doing too much? I mean, she's never met his mom before. I, I understand, you know, maybe showing some kind of gesture, you know, uh, like, you know, I, I, I know this your son. I love him. I, I want to be with him. So this is a gesture that I, I'm anxious to meet you, you know. Pleased to meet you. You know, I want to be know you better. You know, some kind of gesture like that. But a Louis Vuitton pocketbook? She could have just bought her the keychain. <laughs> she bought her a whole pocketbook, a whole pocketbook. Now, um, for some people, that might not be a lot of money. For some people, that might not be a lot of money. But, um, mm-mm. No, that, that's, that, I think that was doing too much. And even his mom was like, um, is y'all trying to tell me something? Is y'all trying to set me up for something? Like, <laughs> should I give me a drink? <laughs> but, you know, she was like, uh, oh, and then she said, um, when she heard that they were already in love, uh, and that they fell in love at first sight, she was like, are y'all moving to the altar real quick? Like, Portia was looking all crazy. Dennis didn't say a word. He was just sitting there like, Portia was like uh the uh bleh, bleh, trying to find the right words to say and then she was like you mean the marriage altar no nah, Portia <laughs> the prayer altar <laughs> of course she means the marriage altar but then you know Portia and them they was just looking so uncomfortable they was looking uncomfortable as hell trying to explain you know to his mom the tea on their relationship but um <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, if I was his mom, I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep this little pocketbook, but I'm going to keep my eye on you. I'm going to keep my eye on you. <laughs> but then uh, about Miss Cynthia Bailey, um, I am beginning to think we will never get to meet her man outside of FaceTime. Like, this really is reminding me of the relationship with Sheree Winfield, you know, without the prison jumpsuit, <laughs> without the prison
the jumpsuit. But um, he tells Cynthia that he's planning to come see her in a month. So maybe we will get to see him after all, you know, maybe. But I just hope we're not being strong alone again. You know, like her last relationship, a.k.a. situationship. Um, sh but she did tell us, you know, he swam in the Lake Bailey several times. He didn't got wet. He didn't got dipped. <laughs> he almost drowned. <laughs> but, you know, she told us, you know, a, a little bit too soon, you know, even though we didn't ask for it. But, you know, oh, well, she's happy. Um, and she says that they are exclusive with a capital E. She made sure to say a capital E, like, okay, do y'all need further proof? Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> but then, um, why was Shamari, okay, Shamari, which is Ron DeVoe's wife, um, she was at the cake shop with his mom, you know, to plan the twins' birthday party. And the only thing I was trying to focus on was the cakes in the background and of uh, the royal cakes that the employee was showing her. Um, hey, I can't help it. That's just the cake decorator and me zooming in on the cake art. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's a nice one. Ooh, get that one. <laughs> But she's up there explaining to his mom, you know, how she really hated how their relationship with each other, you know, first started off. And Ron's mom was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. She she just gave me like, I don't even want to be here. Like she was looking all around and doing her eyes all crazy like and, you know, side eyes and everything. And she was said, uh, well, you know what? Why didn't you, as a woman, come to me as a woman and let me know what you feel or how you felt? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, why didn't you? <laughs> You've been together all this time. Like, they've been together how long? How long? I think she said last episode, 17 years. I think she said, you know, don't quote me on it, but I think she said 17 years. But, you know, I couldn't really tell where his mom was coming from. Um, She was like, you know what? My son was famous. He was young. He was making a few coins, you know, making some coinage. And so naturally she was overprotective. And it was all kind of girls coming after him. Shoot. Back then he was my husband. And I was only like 15 or 6. <laughs> no, I was younger than that. I was younger than that. But anywho, you know, everybody loved them some Ron, you know, from uh, BBD and from New Edition. Everybody loved them some Ron. But anywho, you know, uh, after that, what on earth gave her the idea to tell her mother-in-law at that time? That, oh, I should have turned my volume down. My bad. What on earth gave her the idea to tell her mother at that time that her and Ron used to have an open relationship? Like, she already sitting there like she don't even want to hear nothing you got to say about how they used to, their relationship used to be back in the day and them not getting along. And she want to finally tell her at a cake shop on a reality show. That, you know, I didn't like how our relationship was. And also, by the way, we used to have an open relationship. We used to get down with the get down. Like, his mom was like, okay, uh, um, I did not sign up for this. I know she's looking around, like, at the cameras. Like, are we really live right now? Are we really live? <laughs> and, of course, they weren't live, but they were filming. And that's, that's the look his mom was giving me. Like, her expressions was priceless. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, why would you tell? Uh, why would you ever tell your mother-in-law that y'all used to get down with the freaky deaky stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. But, of course, as usual with any open relationship, the man doesn't mind bringing other women into the pic. But as soon as she mentions another man, it's time to close shop. And that's literally what happened. <laughs> that's how that ended. And then uh, we are at Bailey's Barbecue, Cynthia's Bailey's Barbecue. And the hot dog factory arrives with a gazillion, like a gazillion different types of hot dogs. Thanks to Portia's man, you know, Dennis, because again, he owns a hot dog factory. But did y'all see all them dang hot dogs? 
like Portia. How many people did you expect to be at that barbecue? Because that man brought in enough hot dogs to feed an entire elementary school and the daycare next door. <laughs> and then why on the patio or the deck? You know, um, Cynthia, she brings up, you know, about Eva um, telling everybody that Will, that she had hired Will or paid Will to be her boyfriend or something like that. And Nene was like, um, I know Cynthia way too well. I know what Cynthia way too well. If there's anybody more frugal than Candy, it's probably Cynthia because she ain't gonna pay no man for no to be with her, not even pay him for a date. So I don't know. I don't know where Eva could have possibly got that idea or if that's one of those um, can't, <laughs> I'm not even going to bring that up. <laughs> I don't know where she got that idea from. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. But that's kind of messed up, don't you think? Insinuating that somebody can't get a man, so they have to buy one? I mean, does Cynthia look like the type to y'all that would pay for a mail order gigolo? I'll wait. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Cynthia's pretty. She's pretty. And she used to be a model. She's, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think so. But we better meet that new man soon. We we better meet him soon. And not on FaceTime. Shoot, not on FaceTime. But then um, we finally introduced the Nini's good friend, Tanya. Tanya spelled just like my name, but hers is pronounced Tanya, which is how a lot of people want to pronounce my name when they first meet me because it has the A. They're like, okay, Tanya. No, it's Tanya. It's Tanya, you know. <laughs> but anywho, um, Nene claimed that she's a frequent customer at her swag boutique. You know, she's a baller. She's a fascinista. fascinista she's a computer geek. But she's really, really pretty. And it looked like she was fitting in really well with the ladies. <laughs> but Cynthia, you know, um, she had actually said they could bring a plus one. So tell me why did Portia feel like it was okay to bring a plus one, plus one? <laughs> she not only brought her sister, Lauren, but she also brought her friend, Shamia. And y'all remember, Shamia and Eva had, you know, a little uh, situation you know, before in the past. So, Eva, you know, of course she was a little surprised, you know, to see her come through the door. But, um, and I guess Portia figured it was the perfect time to tell a very pregnant Shamia that Eva has recently been talking about her uh, or trying to be shady about her, you know, even though she thought that their whole thing that they had uh, was squashed. You know, a little beef or a little pettiness or whatever it was. She thought it was squash. But, you know, she had to tell Shamia. And I don't know what it is about people on these reality shows. When people are pregnant, why do they always bring them drama? Like, let them be pregnant and let them be peaceful and let them be drama free. And, you know, wait till after they had that baby to try to tell them some mess about somebody going in on them. You know, because some of these pregnant women out here, they forget they they will forget they pregnant. And in 2.5, try to bust somebody upside the head, you know, trying to go into labor early. So, but anyway, um, Eva was cracking me up. When she shows Cynthia her receipts to prove she actually personally cooked the pineapple upside down cake because some of them ladies was like, oh, my chef made it. Oh, my chef made it. <laughs> like, not only do you probably not cook at home ever, but then your chef is also making your potluck dish. Who does that? Like, come on now. It's a potluck. The least you could do is try to make something yourself to bring to the barbecue, but I don't know. I guess she didn't have time. I guess she didn't have time. But anyway, um, Eva was like, oh, I didn't learn from last season. You need to keep all your receipts nearby at all times. So she was going through her phone and she was flipping, showing Cynthia the pictures. Okay, this is the black cast iron skillet that I cooked the cake in. Okay, this is the batter that I mixed for the cake. 
Um, this is the can of pineapples I bought from Walmart. This is the can of <laughs> But she was showing her all the pictures, like, yeah, I got my receipts, sis. I got my receipts. <laughs> I made this. <laughs> but that's funny because I swear. I swear, everybody knows I'm a custom cake decorator. And some people will see some of my cake art and be like, you did not make that. No, you didn't. Where'd you get that from? Where'd you, what store you picked that up from? I'm like, I did make the cake. <laughs> I did make the cakes. Now eat the cake, anime. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's a compliment, though. That's a compliment. You know, they can't believe that you're that talented. But anywho, anywho, moving right along. Um, finally, uh, I realized what the heck Ronnie meant. Okay, last episode, when he was telling Candy and the ladies at the table, um, when he was telling them, and I think this was at, that was at um, hmm, Shamari's old group's uh they had did a performance or something, did a uh, performance. And he was telling her at the table afterwards, you know, trying to give her like some tips on her group escape, you know, their performance. And I was like, dang, Candy was sure getting kind of upset. But now I see what he meant when he had told her, you know, y'all placement. He said something about y'all placement. And I think what happened was, I think the producers then showed a whole conversation because when he said placement, it was like, okay, I, I, I was like, kind of, you know, the wheels were spinning. What is he talking about? But then Candy was saying today, oh, what well, he going to talk about again? Our spacing was off or, you know, not right. So I'm thinking what he was trying to say was when they were performing, their spacing wasn't right. Like, you know, when you got, when you're on stage and, you know, you got three, four or five people, whatever, you know, you got to be lined up, you know, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but anywho, I think that's what he was saying. And I was like, okay, now I understand. I understand. I understand. I mean, I hope I understand. Did I understand that right? <laughs> Is that what he meant? <laughs> but that's what it sounded like from Candy. But you know what? Again, um, I learned another revelation. Samari said that Portia has always had a donkey booty since high school. For those of you who might think that her butt is manufactured, that is Portia's real booty meat. <laughs> so no, Portia did not purchase a manufactured donkey booty from some no-name doctor in some cheap, stinking motel room. But, um, <laughs> y'all know, whenever somebody starts something off with no shade, but they not about to be shady, they about to be real shady. And they did just that when they started playing that game called Pass the Peach. I was like, oh, Lord, this this about to go left. This about to go left real quick. But actually, um, when they first started playing in Eva's defense... She did take the peach, but then she quickly passed the peach on because I think she didn't want to be shady that day <laughs> for some reason. She was shady when she was doing the photo shoot, talking about Cynthia Old, talking about she's the mother of the modeling uh, world now. She's the mother. We got to respect mother. You know, she needs to show us how they used to get down back in the day. <laughs> how they used to model, you know, the vintage models. <laughs> but anyway, um, and then she was shady about Shamia, you know, the last uh, episode. So anywho, um, I think she was trying not to be shady this time. So she hurried up and passed the peach. But anyway, they was like, nope, nope, you ain't getting out of this one. Um, first question out of Candy and Shamari, who do you think needs a makeover the most? Now, Eva responded with Candy, um, she's dressed more fashionable, but Shamari wins the most snatched, hands down. What y'all think about that now? Do y'all agree? Honestly, y'all, honestly, don't don't play with me now, y'all. <laughs> do y'all agree? I mean, I really, really need to know. Do y'all think Candy was dressed most fashionable? 
Hold on, let me pull up a picture. Let me see if I can find a picture. <clears throat> the woman who likes men and women. The woman who likes men and women. Miss Shamari DeVoe. Okay, be honest. Let's take a poll. Eva said Candy was dressed most fashionable. And I did like that little top. I did like that little top that Candy had. I can't wear nothing like that, though. So you go, girl, because I've been a had one side booby falling out the other side, and I've been trying to hold it up. And the, yeah, mm, mm, I'm too big chested for all that. But as far as Shamari's outfit, did y'all find that snatched? The little little thing holding her boobs with zippers all around it. The big, big, huge gold earrings. Um, that belt. That belt that looked like some prison chains. And some nice white jeans or pants. I don't know. Y'all tell me. <laughs> Y'all tell me. I did like Candy's outfit, though. I really, really did. But I'm still, I'm still debating. <laughs> I'm still debating on Shamari's outfit. But anywho, anywho, moving right along. Um, as far as the next question, um. It was for Marlo. They asked Marlo, who in the group do you think is the biggest liar? Now, Marlo responded with, in the past, I would say it was Portia. But in the future, she said she would say it was Eva. And I was like, uh-oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> and then I was like, Eva, Eva, don't even ask. Don't even ask why they think you like the biggest liar. But she asked anyway. <laughs> she asked anyway. Then Marlo and Eva was going back and forth trying to decide, you know, or determine who's the most basic chick of the group. Um, Candy was like, forget that basic stuff. Eva. How are you going to be so shady to Shamia the last time we met? All shady behind her back. And then today, you up here fixing her plate like y'all cool. Like y'all cool. And Eva was acting like she did no wrong. But were sh was she also wrong when she started spreading rumors around that Cynthia paid Will to be her mail order gigolo? She was like, she don't know that as a fact to be true. I'm like, which part don't you know to be true? The part that Cynthia paid Will to be her boy toy part? Or that she doesn't know of the rumors she's been accused of spreading to be true? Hmm, what y'all think? What y'all think? I don't know. Eva was acting like she was on the hot seat. Like she looked like she had a guilty conscience. She was looking all nervous. <laughs> she was she was trying she was trying to perpetrate like she was calm. But I could tell, I could see right through her. She was looking nervous. Like she know she probably said that. But y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all think Eva really said that, that Cynthia goes around hiring men to be her hired boy toy. Y'all let me know. <laughs> but I think she probably said it. But anywho, um, then the question Candy was given was, who is the freakiest one of the group? And she had the ner Candy had the nerves to say, it's Portia. I'm like, okay, Portia, her big old donkey booty might be freaky. But uh-uh, Candy, hands down. I think Candy is the freakiest, and I think they all know Candy is the freakiest one of the group. I mean, who throws sex dungeon parties? Um, who's the one that has started a soy a, a toy, a sex toy line a few years ago that's still going, still very profitable too. She had a sex uh show on TV. <laughs> but she had the nerve to say Candy. I mean, Portia was the most freakiest. Mm, I beg to differ, Candy. I beg to differ. <laughs> and then, last of all, y'all need to tell me 
while Shamari was jumping up in the air like she had just won the grand prize when Cynthia asked which one of them had had an open relationship before. She was way too excited, jumping up and down like, me, me, me. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> then she was talking about it was awesome. She was like, and it was awesome. But remember, she ended it because he was allowed to sleep with other women, but she wasn't allowed to sleep with other men. Now tell me what is so awesome about that. <laughs> I, I don't think that's fair at all <laughs> that's a one-sided a one-sided open relationship nah bro mm -mm. He, she talking about she slept with maybe two women and he slept with like 10 50 11 you know <laughs> too many to count i uh, i would have never imagined i mean i know back in the day he was like a lot of girls crush a lot of girls had crush on him and probably some grown, way grown women probably had crush on him too. But open relationship with his wife? Hmm. I would have never imagined that. Never imagined. But I can definitely imagine um, in any open relationship, the man is always like, yeah, you know, get her, get her. Find us a girl, find us a girl. But as soon as the lady be like, well, what about this nigga right here? <laughs> then it's a wrap. Then it's a wrap. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they ain't going for that. They ain't going for that. <laughs> but anywho, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Let me thought. Let me know what y'all thought about Nene's friend, Tanya. Uh, my bad, Tanya, that showed up. Um, let me know what y'all thought about uh, Eva being accused of spreading rumors that Cynthia be um, paying for mail order gigolos. Um, <laughs> and last but not least, do y'all think Candy is freakier than Portia? Or do y'all think Portia might be freakier than Candy? Let me know. Honest opinions. Let me know. Put it in the chat. And remember, even after the show, even after my live is over, you can always hit me up in the comment section. Put your comments in there about any of the characters, any of your um, opinions on the show and whatnot. But, uh, oh yeah, Cynthia's man. Do you think we're going to actually meet him? Like, do you think he's actually going to appear on the show eventually? You know, of course, the reality show is, isn't filmed in real time. So when he said he'll be there in a month, you know, we don't know when that was or, you know what I'm saying. But hmm, I hope we do. I really hope we do. That way we can lay eyes on him, hit the whole him <laughs> and try to see for ourselves is what they have is real. Or if it is a fraud of a relationship. Hmm. Anyway. Anyway. But anyway, you guys. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video on your social platforms. Um, your uh, Twitter. Your Facebook. You know, whatever platforms you use. Also, don't forget. I put the link of our Facebook group in the chat. So make sure you click on that link. Um, request to join Facebook group. And I'll add you to the group. I'll add you to the group. But in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, you know what it is. Stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out. <laughs>